Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Osha. Uh, let's start episode 349 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. And Francois is writing. Dear Vidas, I would like to ask about an exotic pedal in German, Stummel pedal. Impossible to find an adequate translation. Will this pedal form, coming from Halberstadt over Böhm's E organs, to mention a better form than the the ones on spinet organs, has come adva- has some advantages. One is that it is not so monstrous like a conventional pedal in a house organ. I think of building one long pedals axis far behind. So my question. Did you have to do with historical pedal of this form, or students who could bring farther technique, at least till some romantic works, practicing on this kind of pedals? Thanks in advance. Nicer and nicer your daily email. Thank you, Francois. Oh, this is really wonderful to hear that Francois is enjoying our daily conversations. Oh, sure. True. Can you say some nice words to Francois at, at, at first? I'm appreciated. It's nice that you know somebody finds finds this nice and it's useful. That's why we are doing it. Exactly. If nobody would uh, pay attention or find them valuable, we would probably be doing something else. And um, concerning. Uh, Francois' question, uh, the the picture that he is uh, sharing is basically here looks like a, a pedal board with very short uh, sharp keys and f- it's flat and some electronic uh, pedal boards have that 25 uh, keys MIDI Orgel, organ pedal board suitable for jazz and Hammond clavier Nord PK27 model. Um, it looks like similar to historical instrument, right, Osha? But it's, it has some differences. Well, too. It's, well, for me, it does not look like historical. The only similarity, of course, is it's flat. Yes, that's the only similarity, mm-hmm. as, I, as far as I can see. And plus 25 keys um, are really not enough, I think. For today's practice, you need 30 keys, I believe. Yes. Or sometimes 32 and then, you know, historical pedal board, even it's often as flat as this one is, it, um, it's displayed sort of wider, mm-hmm. because the keys are wider too, and especially, you know, black keys, they are also wider, in my experience. 
and you know on the keyboard like this you will really have to play sort of like a ballerina I've I've played such a similar disposition Me before too. on Allen digital Me too. organ. I played it. Some 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 of Allen digital has this kind of pedal board, mm -hmm. and it's sort of you know pain in the um, pain in the neck. <laughs> Not only in the neck, but you know Everywhere. what I mean. I don't know. I don't want to swear. It's uh, it's uh, very. Inconvenient to play actually. True. Uh, you ha you have to constantly think about where you're hitting, and if you're playing historical keyboards, pedal boards they are, as Osha says, wider. Mm -hmm. And this kind of pedal board, uh, I don't I don't know what we are suited for. N n neither for historical, you know, performance practice, nor really for modern music practice. It's it's really not so comfortable. And uh, we have uh, uh, pedal boards with 25 notes uh, in our church uh, chapels, right? They go up until C. And. Um, I guess a lot of organs in Baroque time had the compass until C, um, treble C, but but today sometimes we, even in Baroque organs, need D, right? Of course, it's better, you know, to have this kind of keyboard than don't have any keyboard. Mm -hmm. And You mean pedal board? Pedal board, yes. And I mean, if you can manage such a pedal board, you will probably will be able to manage any other <laughs> pedal board. So, uh, Francois is thinking of building one. And maybe if he likes historical uh, pedal boards, maybe he could uh, look at pedal clavichord layout. But as uh, so, you know, I understood from his letter that he maybe does not have so much space as the real pedal board takes. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess what he liked about this one that it doesn't take so much space. Yes, it's smaller. So, and pedal clavichord, you know, pedal board takes a lot of space. It's probably the same space as uh, normal. Baroque organ pedal board would, would take. At least, maybe even mm -hmm. a little bit more. But in general, he asks, um, can you um, advance in organ playing, not only playing early music this way, but also romantic and modern? Of course you can. Using uh, early type of pedal board. Well, to play the modern music on the yes. Baroque, well... That's a tricky question. Did we, we heard um, this um, situation in Rochester, New York, remember in one conference, when one student at Eastman School of Music, he practiced exclusively on the pedal clavichord, even Sonata by Roybke, and was got really good with it. At least he said. So... People do all kinds of tricks, I think. What do you think about that? Well, you can do that, but anyway, when you will get to another organ, you will have to readjust. Mm -hmm. But that's the case for all, all organists with each different instrument. Mm -hmm. Imagine if Bach wanted to create romantic music on his area organs, what he would do, you know? I think, I think it's very unrealistic. He didn't live in romantic era, area, so... Era, period. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have to struggle with that and to solve that dilemma. And composers influence um, organ builders and vice versa in, oh. in their discussions and um, meetings about what kind of 
music to create and what kind of instruments to build. That's right. Okay, well, this is interesting question, right? Um, the one that people sometimes have to think um, deeply in uh, in figuring out, figuring out the solutions, and solutions might not fit everyone, right? If Francois likes this kind of pedal board, there is no nobody stopping him, right? True, why not? And um, he can do that, and after he's done that and um, modified his pedal board, maybe he can then, after six or ten years, or actually months, uh, tell us his experience, if, if he likes it or not. True, because it's still better to have such a pedal board than not having any. Than pr- practicing on the floor. True. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you guys for sending these questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice... Miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your SS courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner, and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vida Santosha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.